I always did my mates hair when, when we were kids, we were punks and, and skinheads and stuff, you know. So uh, all the boys getting their mohawks and their number ones all over. And I, I, I was your man, I, I used to do all the boys. In those days it was like, I don't know, per hand. Oh, I the clippers that you, you do by hand. No way. They were, they were pretty horrible. They used to sort of pull more hair out. Right <laughs> but uh, how did I get started? I, I was in London. I went away to London when I was 19 to get away from... From here? Ah, yeah. well, it wasn't a great time. In the no. 80s, you know, no work. Margaret Thatcher's bread and three million people unemployed. And Northern Ireland was in sectarian chaos. So, well, like all that, all myself and my, my mates were interested in was music. Uh -huh. So, I'm more starved of live music in Northern Ireland. Yeah. Because bands didn't come to I Belfast. So, I went away to London and... Uh, more or less by accident, I ended up working as a barman. Right. It, it allowed me to uh, to live in Urge Court in South Kensington, and nice parts of London. It would cost you an arm and a leg to stay. Well, you, whenever you work in a pub, you live up above it. And it was great. It was a great career path and all the rest of it. But I decided that I wanted to come back to Northern Ireland after six years. I sort of missed the wee place, you know. Came back. Uh, and you know the only place I really wanted to live was was Hollywood, right? Because Hollywood's got such a great community, where people are very accepting of each other's traditions and mm -hmm. lifestyles. And the thing I love about Hollywood is, I mean, I've got the beach at my back door. Mm -hmm. When I lived in London, it used to take me two hours to get to the beach, and you know I can live. I've got my business here in Hollywood. We're very much at the heart of the community. Yeah. Three generations of customers. You know, I can be in the Belfast in five minutes if, if the traffic's going with you, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I so, it. live music and stuff, I'm only going to Belfast to hear yeah. gigs or anything. Yeah. You know, I'm only Which is obviously something you're still interested in, yeah? Well, very yeah. much so. Yeah. Um, my wife organises the music festival here in Hollywood. Oh, right. The okay. Hollywood Harmony Festival, yeah. Oh, right. And we're still very active. I mean, last night we had a gig in here, a local singer songwriter, Gareth Dunlop. He, he was in the shop here performing last night, okay. which we filmed, and uh, it, was, uh, it was sponsored by these guys, put it. So I managed to go through three bottles of that stuff last night, so <laughs> that's a good night. <laughs> well, my first shop was uh, down around the corner on Shore Street. It was a small, little, off the beaten track sort of a place. Okay. And uh, we, we were there for 13 years. And then what happened was the big, the big event, really, that changed everything was whenever Tesco's opened at Napa Gully. It changed the whole fabric of Hollywood's high street. I mean, I remember in Hollywood there used to be three butchers. There was, you know, there must have been three or four track fingers. There was four or five travel agents. There was a, a fishmongers, you know, mm -hmm. and. All of those businesses, as a direct result of Tesco's, closed. So, long story short, at one stage there was, I counted 14 empty shops on the high street in Hollywood, and I looked at it from a point of view of this is my only opportunity in a buyer's market to buy something on the Hollywood high street. So I, I took I took advantage of that. There, there was two trains of thought. A lot of people thought Hollywood was dead in the water. Mm -hmm. Last month turned out the lights. Mm -hmm. Whereas a lot of other people thought, that, well, it will have to diversify. And, you know. yeah. Yeah. and of course, Hollywood now is a very different place from what it was then. Yeah, Hollywood seems to be the, the hub now of the, the whole media, yeah. television, and uh, film sort of industries in Northern Ireland. So all the players, they're all, they're all here in Hollywood now. So. It's very much a different place, but it is very much an environment yeah. where men come into and they feel comfortable. Yeah. You know, if you notice there about the thing, it's just what goes see that. You know, what goes to barbershops? There's no barbershops, so that's pretty much it. It's it's somewhere where where, where men feel comfortable and yeah. You know, so and men being creatures of habit, they find somewhere they like, they come yeah. back time and time again. Yeah. Like there's Andrew there in the corner, I used to cut his hair when he was a wee nipper. Oh, right. And his brother. No, really. And I still cut his daddy's hair. And, <laughs> yeah. And the amount of people are walking past and waving in it. It's unreal. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I, you know, I only have one shop. And I've only ever wanted one shop. 
Uh, a lot of people say to me, why did you never open another branch? You know, yeah. And A, I don't want the logistical headache of it, but B, I think if it says Gary's Barbershop above the door, I think I should be here. Yeah. You know, And I like being here, and I probably know three quarters of my customers by their first name. That's and that's, that suits me just fine. Yeah. I, 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 like being, I like being in the hub of the, the, hub of the community. You know? And what a great community it is. So it's, a, it's very much a two-way thing. You know?